All right, now I'm going to probably tackle something like the feet. So I have right now a rough, and I don't want a rough. So I'm probably going to just paint straight on the canvas for this. And I think I'm going to talk less now. If you have a question, just call out. Oops. So what I'm going to start off with here, maybe I'll even do this on a layer. Nah, there's no point doing it on a layer. I'm just going to put in flat colors. I could just start with these colors and blend them in, but I think I want different color relationships than what's going on here. So start with the flats. You can see what I'm doing right now is basically like uh, doing a drawing but in color. Just figuring out what those local colors are. And I'm just... I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to necessarily touch everything on this boot. We'll probably just react to it as we go. So I really like the rim light that's happening here. Add some shine to the boot. And I'm also liking on the original the warm colors that are happening, but I don't like where they're happening. So I'm just going to take this gray and use it as my warm color here instead. So with this brush, I like the fact that if I touch really lightly, I lose pressure, I mean, I lose size, and it gets a little bit of greeniness to it. And so I'll almost use it to crosshatch sometimes so that things will blend the way that I want them to. So now if I go to my blend tool, well, wrong blend tool. Gives me this really smooth, controlled result. And if I want to make any adjustments from there, I can basically just do the same thing, just kind of cross hatch in the, res the look that I want. You'll notice, and I, you probably have noticed this in the way that you draw, but I think it's especially true when I'm painting that there are certain directions that your strokes are natural and feel right and other directions that feel really awkward. And so use the canvas rotation so that you're taking advantage of the um, strokes as much as possible, just being in the direction that you want them to. I'm not going to rotate too much, hopefully, in this video just because it's annoying to be watching a video and have it be rotating everywhere. But, but when you're painting, I would say do this more often than not. Or, well, if, if you're just holding R and rotating, it snaps at that degree. overlay kind of washing over onto the feet. So I have in my mind what the sphere tests are. Instead of creating a sphere test on the side and just picking colors from it, I, I know which things are what directions in my scene and so I'm just going to cheat. I'm just going to 
toss in colors from the image where I feel like they ought to be for that part of the scene. Painting on the wrong layer again. That happens more often than I'd like to admit, which is probably part of the reason why I like to flatten my layers as soon as possible. So you can see we have a, a really bright color here, but I picked a color that was much darker than the brightest color because we, like I said, you lose one to two steps in a reflection. And by the way, when I refer to steps, in case you don't know, if, if you did a scale of one to 10 with your brightness from, from black being zero to white being 100 or being 10, then two steps is, you know, like from eight to six in that scale. So that's why I'm dropping, you know, instead of picking up these brighter colors, I'm picking these ones that are almost over here in the shadows because we're actually losing a lot of light through that. Or I can just darken down by hand like that. It's fine also. So I'm imagining most of this scene is going to be blue, but we'll probably get a little bit lighter as it goes higher and a little bit darker as it goes lower. Because this object is flat, I'm going to have just kind of a soft gradient on this face. We'll keep it mostly flat. But for a lot of this other stuff, I'm going to pull in other colors. So I would typically not get in this close when I'm working on details. The only place that I would do that is maybe on the face. The only reason why I'm getting this close for the shoe. So I'm, I'm deliberately staying rough still because I want you to paint like this. I want you to think in terms of the rough colors. But the, the problem with getting in this close is you start worrying about details that are smaller and finer than what you ought to. So I'm going to be deliberately trying to keep this really rough through here. So I need to figure out what this yellow does under this cool light. So I'm going to go up in value just because I'm doing the lit area. But I'm going to roll just a little bit towards those cyans. And I'm going to go down in saturation a little bit. And in between, I need a transitional color since we've got two different colors of lighting here. Go from the yellow to kind of an orange yellow through here to almost an orange down through there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with these reds. Let's try and find what that color is going to be. So you may notice that I went a different direction on the color wheel for the reds than I did for the yellows. Does anybody have any ideas to why I did that? The blues are in the opposite direction. Yeah, so so yeah, if I went, if I actually was trying to go cool and I'm starting with a red, if I roll that direction, I'm going to yellows, right? 
So I need to roll in the direction of the color wheel that takes me cooler, and that will give me a blue effect, right? And it's the same thing here. If, if I'm trying to make a, you know, blue show up in a, you know, let's go completely opposite the spectrum. Well, which direction is cooler than that yellow? It's going to be towards the greens, right? Now, if you're really going to the opposite end of the spectrum, usually what you're going to be doing is um, you'll be dropping down in value and saturation. And so the blues in that case would be grays. I mean, yeah, whether it was green or whatever almost becomes irrelevant at that point because it's grays to describe that. I'm going to toss in a specular highlight. Whenever you're doing a specular highlight, unless you're dealing with something that has iridescence or where there's like a film that has a color to it over the top, the specular highlight is going to be the color of the light source. It is a reflection of the light source. So even though the surface is yellow, the specular reflection on this surface is going to be blue. And I'll turn that down. The specular highlight is going to be the color of the light source. So, well, yeah, so the exception being if there's a film that is a color over it, like, you know, if somebody got covered with, uh, you know, red Kool-Aid or something like that, then the specular highlight might be a little bit different, right? Um, but, I mean, even in that case, it's... I feel like on, I feel like gold, Yeah, so so on on gold, the so any any colored metal is actually filtering out other colors of light, and so you will get a shift to the specular highlight based on the color of that metal. But in the case of something like this, where you know it's just a rubber or something like that, and it's got you know some shine to it, the rubber has no influence on how that shine responds. It's all about the um, the light source then in that case and I actually went since I was going to be turning this one down in opacity I went a little bit more saturated than I'm imagining the light source really is in this case and I think that's okay and then I might do the same thing here you know I'm I'm gonna make it look like this specular highlight has the blue of the sea around it and so I'm just going to pick a little bit more saturated color just to go immediately around it. Oh, that's really saturated. And then I can go all the way to white and it still feels like a blue specular highlight. Right. So this is the sole of the shoe. Yeah, the shadow I'm imagining is going to be just a little bit softer than that. So I'm just going to make that a slightly soft edge there. But yeah, that's just supposed to be the, a dark sole to the shoe. Now I'm going to make it look like this shoe is just a little bit beaten up. Now that I've got the colors to kind of feel like I want them to. I want it to feel not like metal, but just kind of like a, a well-polished rubber or plastic or something like that. So I'm just going to add in a couple of scrapes now. And this is a case where, you know, if I use a, a textured blender on the skin, I might use a smooth blender here because I want that to feel like a polished surface. And then when I put a little scratch or ding in it, then it's going to look more like that. And th this is one of the cases where I could get super detailed here if I'm not careful. So I'm going to probably zoom back out and just deal with the, no, maybe not that far, but I just want the highlights, the specular highlights and things like that to show mm -hmm. up where I want them to and not get too caught up in the specific details.
talk a bit about how you were able to fall off on the rim light there. It's something you can come with on mine. Or is that about how far you take that treatment? That fluid? Yeah, so this rim light, I only put it in here because it's a specular highlight. I mean, because it's a specular surface. And so I'm trying to catch all of the light that's going on back here along that edge. So if I really wanted to get this to look right, I should probably do something like this. And not have it just be a rim light. And so what I'm seeing Yeah, but I can talk about rim, rim lights a little bit. So what I'm putting in here is two parts. It, it's the Fresnel effect, first of all. So that's going to be one thing. And then I'm also trying to get a form change to the boot. So I want it to be just slightly rounded on top. So I'm adding in that gradient on a second layer. And I think that's going to make it a little distracting. But I don't know, I might have to just deal with that later. I don't want this boot to be the most interesting thing in the image. And that's one of the dangers of putting in too much detail here, but we'll just stick with it as is. So realistically, there's not going to be a rim light on a specular surface. It's going to be, I'm actually going to be reflecting the dark stuff back here on that rim. Yeah, in order to get a, so the light has to be directly behind in order to cast a rim light, or in order to put a rim light there, on a specular, on a surface that's really shiny, this, this shiny anyway. Like, I'm imagining this is just a black mirrored surface, so in order to get the light right there, the light has to be right there. We'll just soften that out a little bit. I don't want to have too much detail here. Maybe I won't go 100% mirror with this. I'll just make it kind of diffused and not too specific. But let's just go up here just to talk about how we would do a rim light. So I don't want a strong rim light, but I'm just going to do kind of a cool blue along here and I've got stuff on another layer that's getting in the way there it's another example of me painting on the wrong layer so usually you're going to want um, if it's a really bright light source you're going to want the overexposed color and then a mid-tone for that room light since this is kind of a soft light source, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the opacity on this in just a minute, but um, I'm probably going to want that color to be nice and saturated because you'll actually lose saturation when you turn down the opacity. You always lose saturation when you turn down opacity. So. Um, 